What is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Travis. Of course, TWA Motorsports you're watching here. And today we are gonna put a cold air intake, well, kind of, on the Daily Driver Stepside Sierra. So in the last video on this thing, you guys saw we got the electric fans in there. Guys, they are working great. I was wanting to do this in that video, but I was up against a time crunch. My son, like I said, is this is his daily driver. We try to do work on the weekends or of an evening if it's something quick. And so that's kind of where we, where we left off. I mean, we got the fans accomplished and they're coming on, they're working like they're supposed to. And then I don't know, like I haven't driven this thing other than out of the garage since I put the electric fans on it, but my son says it just rips now. Now, <laughs> look, I don't know, it may be in his head because I told him it probably would, so maybe it's in his head. But um, it, this thing's came a long way, but ultimately, guys, I don't have a lot of faith in the aftermarket um, cold air intakes out there. Uh, I, and when I say that, I don't think that you're getting a ton of performance when you open up a filter to under the hood heat. Now I know a lot of the kits, they make this like kind of baffle that blocks off things and maybe I'm wrong, but ultimately this, what we're using today is called an MIT. So it's a, that's, and I'll list this stuff in the description, both the air aid and the green filter. Guys, I have a lot of faith in the green filter. I used it in my ZR1. I've got it in just about everything out here, but this is gonna be the almost, actually it is the exact setup that I have in the green truck here. Um, this requires you to have electric fans in order to use this kit. So just so you guys know, this will not fit with the big factory fan shroud. So don't buy this if you don't have electric fans, okay? Uh, it, it is required. So, and that's another reason why I kind of wanted to put it on at the same time. But what we're going to be replacing, this is only the tube. So it's going to get rid of that big, huge baffle that goes down underneath. It cleans it up and makes it look a lot nicer, gets rid of this like accordion piece. And they say it picks up some power. Now, I don't know, guys. I have honestly never looked at the filter in this truck, so it just may be destroyed and nasty. But what this does is it utilizes your stock air box, and we're going to put an aftermarket filter in and that tube. I don't know that we're going to do any kind of modification to the box, but we'll see as we get it open. But for now, we need to, I'm going to go grab my hood light. We're going to get some things apart and see if we can get this installed. Now, you can start right here. There's a little clip that kind of holds this line. It's been off so many times it's about worn out, but you got a flat blade screwdriver and you probably should take your, I don't know, maybe you should take your intake cover off. Generally, as many times as I've taken this off over the last few videos, it shouldn't be super tight, but. And then I like to use the screwdriver to kind of pry against this and the mass airflow sensor to get this off. Be careful because a mass airflow sensor is just plastic, but got that end off. Let's see if we can get this one off. And you can see here in just a second, see this big chunk of plastic. This was meant for GM to silence the air, but we don't want this. We don't want the air silence. We want, we want it loud. So now that we got that off, Let's concentrate over here on the box itself. So that, you probably could use a flathead, but I've got a Phillips here. And guys, we're gonna have a surprise together. I have no idea what this filter looks like. I'm gonna go ahead and unplug the mass airflow sensor. You probably should unhook your battery for this, but seeing as we're not like breaking into any wiring, I don't know that it's necessarily, I don't know that you necessarily have to. I'm sure the instructions tell you to. You should have one of these in each corner. We'll lift this thing off here, hopefully. Holy cow, it's been on there a minute. Okay, well the filter's not, okay, it's not, it's not terrible. Looks like somebody in the pad, I mean, that's not a stock filter, so somebody's changed it. It's got some debris in it. And the bottom of the box, of course, looks like just about every one of them is completely disgusting. We're gonna see if we can just yank this thing out. It should just be clipped. So 
sometimes it's easier said than done. It's just in some rubber clips down there. Woo, it's in there. I'm hoping that we can get it out of here. We're just gonna have to go back and forth and kind of pry. I'm gonna push, there's a clip down here that I think I can push together. We're gonna start with that one. Yeah. Let me show you guys what I'm talking about. I think if we get a pair of needle nose pliers, we can kind of help this process. See that one right there? I think we can push it together. There's one that looks like um, that's the rubber piece that it sets in, but let's start with that. Okay, the needle nose didn't help me at all. There we go. We got it loose. Holy cow, there's a bunch of dirt in it. Yeah, it's supposed to just have a couple like these guys, see? They're just pieces of rubber that it sets in. They're just being old and a pain. We'll put that stuff back in there. All right, well, I'm gonna take some time to clean that area. You guys know how I am. And then look, we'll vacuum all this junk out of this guy. I don't know. There's a lot of guys that modify this box. I don't, I just don't think I wanna do that. I think we'll just leave it the way it is. I don't know. Looking at all the areas as this pulls out of and making sure we've got it. I'm gonna pull this piece of rubber off here. Let's see if I can do it without breaking it. We'll clean that up too. That's supposed to stay in that tray down there. This is what's supposed to, um, it's supposed to pull out of that. And it's got a crack in it, but it'll be, it should be fine. Now I know nobody will ever see this, but I'll know. So we'll just clean, just use some super clean here. I don't know, to me, if, if you're here, clean it. Although I told you in the last video, I kind of rushed things together and didn't clean like I wanted to, but not quite, this isn't as big a project. And I'm not up against the time crunch here. Definitely in need of a cleaning down here. I generally start with shop towels like this and then I go over another pass with a microfiber. The shop towels just shred up, but they do a good job of getting the big stuff out. All right, let's go over it again with the microfiber. That definitely looks a lot better. Now, I'm gonna grab my vacuum over there, vacuum out the bottom of this, and we're gonna try to clean up the actual box itself. Um, it, it's just absolutely disgusting. I'm gonna try to use my brush and get all the, the little stuff. I'm not gonna like coat the inside of that, but I, I definitely wanna get it cleaner than what it is. Cleaned up the outside of the box and then I brushed around the, the loose stuff and got all of it out. It's not perfect guys, but believe me, there's nothing loose in there. So we're going to go ahead and see if we can get this thing back into place. I know it's kind of a hassle. We are there. So now the next thing I want to do is, I'm going to do this off camera too, but I'm going to clean up the lid. We'll call it the lid over there and make it look a little nicer. Now that I'll probably put a little bit of the chemical guy silk shine on, you know, just to make it, just to make it look a little nicer than what it is. But I'm gonna do that, like I said, off camera, so you guys don't have to watch me. I'm just using my brush, some uh, super clean to clean. And then, like I said, I'll go over that with some silk shine. Woo, look at that. Bling factor up to 100. Looks so much better. So, let's grab the filter out of this box see if this thing fits in here i haven't i bought this a while back and hopefully it fits now this is i don't remember if this is the dry element they make two different versions they make a dry and like one you oil similar to like a 
K and N. I don't remember which one I bought. Looks kind of oily. Yeah, this is the oiled one. And guys, look. I, I don't know. I don't know if I have a preference there. It fits. It's exciting. So now that we know that fits, let's put this thing back on there. And uh, get our screwdriver and screw it down. Where I put my screwdriver at. Probably run tens now. Won't be able to keep it on the streets. I'm gonna open, uh, now that we've got this going, I'm gonna open up that MIT thing. And get, we'll see what parts, I don't, there's not much to it, I don't believe, I think it's just the tube, so, shouldn't be a whole lot to do. Let's open it up and see. Let's see what's in here. Like I said, it should pretty much just be a tube, and you may have to use your clamps off your old piece. I don't, I don't remember, it's been, oh, no, nope. it's got clamps in here. So we got a set of clamps, we got a new rubber piece, another new rubber piece, and then it looks like some instructions. To stop, do not return this product to the store. Okay, deal. Let's close this box up and set it on top and see what we've got. I think it's pretty self explanatory, but that's it, guys. It is um, basically three pieces. This little scrunchy piece is probably the piece for the throttle body, if I had to guess. Or maybe this. And it comes with four clamps, so you do not need the clamps off your old one. What I like about kits like this that come with clamps is the clamps are the right size. You don't have a big, like my upper radiator hose, I don't know if you guys noticed that, but it's really not the right size. Now, let's see which end goes where and then we'll go from that. They also come with a little metal adapter that says it works in California. So the little the scrunchy piece, like this guy, goes there. And these are all look to be the same size. the same way as possible. You know what? They may be different sizes. No, they're all the same. And then this piece, the smaller piece, goes on here. That's pretty much it. I'm going to figure out which way I want. I may move my clamps around face them the other direction. I'm kind of picky about like having them all facing the same way. All right, that's it. So pretty self-explanatory, uh, but I didn't even look at the instructions other than just the placement of which rubber piece went to the end. So let's get this, let's see if we can get this thing installed. I really think I'm probably gonna have to take my intake cover off that eight millimeter to get this thing in place though. One thing it does give you, see that provision right there for that clamp for your upper radiator hose? Because it goes underneath this hose here. And then I think we'll push it on the mass airflow sensor first like that. Yep. 
And then, ooh, that's a reach. That's it. We are in place. And then, like I said, you can clamp your, um, that little clamp can go back in its spot so you're not, your radiator hose isn't like drooping and randomly hitting stuff. But now I guess all I need to do is uh, just tighten this sucker up. I may, I may not have to take this off. I chose to spin these a little bit so they're, you know, kind of uniform and I'm using an eight millimeter to tighten them up. That way I didn't have to take this cover off. It's not like, I mean, it's just one eight millimeter, but. Then of course, once we get these snugged up, we need to tie or put our mass airflow sensor plug back on. And then what do you guys think? Do we need to go out and do another draggy test? Because I haven't done one since we did the electric fans. And I haven't done one, obviously, since we've done this. So do you think we gained any performance? And should we even go give it a shot? I think we should. Well, even if it doesn't make a bit of difference in performance, man, does it look better. Uh, you know, that box looks better, just cleaned up. And... Um, the mass airflow sensor now guys i was wanting to clean the mass airflow wires but i didn't have any cleaner i thought i did but i i didn't that's maybe not a bad idea if you're doing this stuff uh they make a spray which i'll list in the description down below i've, I've actually just ordered some um to clean the mass airflow sensor there's just uh it just sprays against the wires and kind of cleans them up and people say you know they see a boost in performance because they kind of get dirty over the years but i think uh, I did put this in a little different than the instruction said, guys. I put all the rubber pieces on. It says to put the rubber piece on here, tighten it down on the throttle body, and then thread your piece in. Same thing here. Obviously, I didn't do it that way, but it fits, and we don't have any issues. And I really like the fact that they incorporated that radiator hose cover uh, or radiator hose holder in the bottom because, you know, I, this is pretty stiff, and I don't think it dipped down and get into the belt assembly, but. It's nice that they think of stuff like that when they're doing it. But let's get this thing out. And um, it may be a few days. I've got a little bit of wet ground right now. But we're going we're gonna to draggy test this again. So, as you can see, we did not go as fast. We actually went slower with the intake on and the electric fans. Now, look, guys, um, the temperature is a little bit different. It's actually a little cooler. It did spin. I don't know if you guys noticed that, and the thing's gross right now. It's been being driven. But um, as a matter of fact, this has been a couple weeks since I actually did this last thing, and we actually got a good opportunity to go out and run it. But my son was with me this time, so an extra 125 pounds, 130 pounds, um, that's that's at least a tenth so even with that in taking that into consideration you're still talking about a couple things one we put a tailgate on which does put a little bit of drag on the back of the thing didn't have a tailgate on the first time we did it an extra 130 pounds in the truck uh so ultimately we probably ran about the same look guys i don't think that you're getting massive amounts of horsepower from the intake or the electric fans 
Uh, to me, it's a little better gas mileage. It, it does have a little better throttle response than it had before, but it's also spinning a little bit more than it did before. So I think, like I had told you in the first video when we took the draggy out and did this thing, um, ultimately, I think with a different tire, so let's say a 20 and maybe something that didn't spin as much, and a good tune, there is no doubt in my mind this thing would run a 1490. Um, I don't think it would have any trouble doing a 1490 with just the little bit of modifications and that we're talking electric fans, intake, and headers. Um, yeah, I, I really think it would run a 1490, which would be respectable, but either way, didn't get exactly the results. I was hoping for like a 15.1 or a 15.2, just anything better. But if you guys did enjoy this video, please like always go down there and smash that thumbs up button. Guys, if you are not subscribed, go down and hit that subscribe button. Of course, like always, ring that bell icon. That notifies you every single time we drop a new video and stay tuned to see what we work on next.